One of the most frequently asked questions I receive when meeting with a potential client is, do I have a case? I use a three-pronged test to answer that question. First, is liability clear? In other words, was somebody else at fault? Second, if liability is clear, is there insurance to pay the claim? Either the at-fault party's policy, your own policy, or an auto policy of a family member. Third, is there an injury? Without an injury, there is no personal injury claim. When these three criteria are met, a valid claim exists. Potential clients sometimes ask me, do I need a lawyer? Can I settle the claim by myself with the auto insurance company? My short answer is yes, but be careful. You can settle it, but you may not want to because the consequences can be quite severe. For example, if you're still hurt, how do you settle your case when you may not know what's wrong with you? How do you settle your case when you don't know if you're going to need future treatment? How do you settle your case when you don't know what that future treatment's gonna cost? How do you settle your case when you can actually lose your health insurance if you settle your case incorrectly? If you're done treating, how do you even know the value of your case? Some people ask me, isn't it true, Attorney Kloss? I'd be better off without an attorney. Don't you just take my portion of the settlement? And the answer to that is, in the cases I get involved in, no. The question is deceptive in a way because it doesn't recognize that the lawyer does so much more than get you money. So let's deal with the first issue of money. Now, it may be true that if you're not injured and you don't have medical bills, you're probably better off settling it yourself, assuming you don't have future problems show up. A lawyer being involved in that case, which is a sim very simple case, may actually, in a sense, eat up your portion of the settlement. However, when you get involved in cases with physical injuries, the lawyer legally develops the claim so that you receive the claim's true value. Now, the reason the lawyer is able to do that is because the auto insurance companies almost never make you a fair offer in my eyes. Fair offer being defined is what a jury would give. So if the auto insurance company offers you this much and any competent lawyer gets you this much and he takes his portion, you are still left with more than the insurance company would offer you by yourself. Now, this is a generalization, but the fact of the matter is that the auto insurance companies know that they pay a lot more when lawyers are involved. This is why many companies train their adjusters to be nice to you so that you don't get a lawyer. In fact, one insurance company in their actual training manual teaches their adjusters to keep people away from lawyers by being their friend. Now, the second half of this issue that isn't really understood by people that think lawyers take all the money is that they don't understand all the other things that lawyers do. What do lawyers do? Well, they protect you from the auto insurance company. They keep you from making statements that reduce the value of your case. They document and protect evidence, such as witness statements and any kind of damage to your body or your property. With regard to medical providers, they help you make sure that you receive proper diagnosis, treatment, and documentation of all your injuries watch to protect you from your overbilling of doctors, and help keep you out of collections. They make sure the documentation is in a form that you need to give an insurance company because it is your obligation to prove your claim. With respect to health insurance, Medicare and Medicaid, the lawyer helps make sure that they pay when they are required to pay and to make sure that when you settle your claim, you do not jeopardize your insurance benefits. So a lawyer does a lot more than just get a settlement. So even if you just got the same amount of money, with or without a lawyer, the lawyer is actually very valuable. This is the point that many people don't seem to understand. The lawyer protects you from many groups of people and makes sure you don't step on those potential landmines in the personal injury process. Many potential clients are concerned with the legal fee charged by the attorney. While this is an important question and most lawyers charge the standard one-third legal fee for the typical case, I make it a point to tell them that lawyers' fees don't tell a potential client what they really need to know to help ensure that they get a fair settlement. Simply, because one lawyer charges less doesn't mean you're going to automatically get more money. It can depend on the reputation of the lawyer, how hard he fights, how often he goes to court, 
How good is he at documenting evidence in a form that's accepted by the auto insurance companies? And how aggressive is his firm once he's in court, just to name a few? You see, all this information is kept by the auto insurance companies. And I've been told by adjusters and defense lawyers that they look at the lawyer and say, all things being equal, how likely is it that this lawyer is going to convince a jury to award money? Auto insurance companies pay when they perceive a threat. The threat is going to a jury and having the jury award a lot of money. Now, if the lawyer routinely goes to court and when needed goes all the way to a jury and gets jury verdicts, that not only costs the insurance company money with the jury verdict, but it can cost many thousands and thousands of dollars in defense costs the insurance company can avoid if they simply settle before litigation. It's a matter of economics. I sometimes get calls from potential clients asking me, hey, I was at fault in the accident. Can I still file a personal injury claim? And the answer is no. You cannot file a personal injury claim if your negligence caused the accident, but you may be able to file a claim for medical payments with your own auto insurance company if you purchased this coverage. If you bought rental coverage, your auto insurance company should provide a rental car. Now, if you were cited for a seatbelt, lack of insurance, or something unrelated to causing the accident, you may still be able to file a personal injury claim. The issue is who caused the accident not who receives some citation. Many of my clients are surprised at how many claims they actually may have and how many people they may be able to actually collect money from. For example, in a car accident, you may actually be able to collect money from the person who caused the accident. You may be able to collect from the person who owned the car because perhaps they knew the person driving was drunk or in some other way the owner was negligent in giving them the car. If the person was on the job, you may be able to sue the person at fault's employer. And if the state of Ohio or some other municipality wasn't taking care of the roads properly, you may be able to sue them also. Now, if the party at fault has little or no insurance, you may be able to file a claim with your own insurance company depending upon what kind of coverage you bought. As you can see, there are many possible parties and insurance policies to investigate. And that's why it's very important to have a personal injury lawyer like me take a look at this to find all the insurance, all the liable parties, and to make sure that you collect all that you're entitled to by law. Potential clients often ask me, how do I know the auto insurance adjuster is making me a fair offer, assuming they're coming to me after the adjuster has made an offer? And my answer is, you'll never know. Because what does fair mean? If the insurance company offers you a couple hundred dollars and you're not hurt, that might be fair. But if you're seriously injured, fair is what we can convince a jury to pay you for your injuries, not what some insurance adjuster hopes you'll take to go away. Fair is making sure that tests and medical treatment are paid for. Fair is making sure future medical bills are paid for. Fair means you don't lose your health insurance when you settle. So the short answer is, without talking to a personal injury lawyer like me, you may never know the real value of your personal injury claim, and it's unlikely you'll receive a fair settlement, as we've defined it. Many clients ask me, are we going to have to go to court or will there be a lawsuit? And they're surprised to find out that the majority of personal injury claims settle without a lawsuit being filed. Now the way this happens is of course dependent on many factors, including the work done by and the reputation of your lawyer. If a lawyer is willing to go to court, the insurance companies know this and they'll most likely offer a fair settlement but it's also based upon how well the lawyer presented the documented medical evidence to the insurance companies. Did you know that many auto insurance companies actually use computer programs to help determine whether to pay your medical bills and how much to pay for your injuries? In other words, if medical information is presented in a way that medical billing or claim valuation software can understand, then you get a more reasonable offer, which means more money to you and makes litigation less likely. An important issue that arises in the personal injury context is liability. Now, liability is another way of saying who is at fault and who's supposed to pay. Now, the general rule is whoever's at fault is what's called liable for your injuries, and they have to pay for the injuries of those who are injured. Now, it surprises some of my clients to learn 
that they have the burden of proof when it comes to who's at fault. It isn't enough that you were injured, but you have to prove that someone else caused the injury. This is where a lawyer comes in handy. We are trained to find and present evidence regarding liability. And remember, just because the police report says you're innocent does not mean that the auto insurance company will roll over and pay you. Additional witnesses, unforeseen circumstances, and policy coverage issues can arise to cause you problems down the road. It truly can be a minefield for those handling these claims alone. My clients sometimes ask me, what happens if the party at fault has little or no auto insurance to cover my injuries? I tell them, we'll need to get a copy of their auto insurance policy and the policy of any family members they lived with at the time of the accident to check to see if they purchase uninsured or underinsured motorist coverage, depending on the case. This coverage protects you from uninsured or underinsured people who caused the accident and injure you. Basically, the coverage requires your insurance company to compensate you for your injuries just like the party at fault would. Your insurance company can then go after the party at fault to get their money back. You buy this coverage. I strongly suggest to all my clients that in the future they purchase uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage for use in future cases if they don't already have the coverage. And oddly enough, as mentioned above, most people don't know that they may be able to collect from the auto insurance company of the family members they live with at the time of the accident, even if they have their own policy of insurance. Now, all these policies have restrictions and limitations, and you never really know if your own auto insurance adjuster is telling you the truth until you see the policies themselves. Is there some way of knowing if you're getting all the insurance benefits from all the sources that you're entitled to? Not without a personal injury lawyer. And that's why you need a personal injury lawyer like me. Let's take a few minutes to talk about property damage. The party at fault or their insurance company is required to either repair your vehicle or to pay you the value of your vehicle if it's beyond repair. Now usually the auto insurance company of the person who injured you has the option to repair your car or to pay you for it. If they pay you for it, then they give you what's called the fair market value of the vehicle. Now the fair market value doesn't necessarily mean the Kelly Blue Book value, but it means they're required to pay you the value for a comparable vehicle in your area. Another question that clients always ask me is where can I take my vehicle to be fixed? And the law in Ohio, as a general rule, allows you to take your vehicle anywhere you want to be repaired. Now, I do tell my potential clients that if you're using your own insurance to fix your car, make sure to check the policy to make sure you are not limited in where you can get it fixed. But for the most part, you can pick any reputable body shop you desire. Most of my clients ask questions about rental cars. They want to know whether they're entitled to one, who should pay for it, how long they can have it, and what kind of car they're entitled to. As a general rule, the auto insurance company for the party at fault is required to either give you a comparable rental car or reimburse you if you pay for the rental car. Now, how long you get the rental car depends upon whether your car is being repaired or the insurance company is writing a check because the car has been totaled. If the car is being repaired, the auto insurance company will normally give you the rental car for a reasonable amount of time while you're getting your car to a body shop and for a reasonable amount of time while the car is being repaired. Now, if the car has been totaled and they're writing you a check to replace your vehicle, usually the insurance company will give you up until you receive the check and a couple extra days to go out and get another car. After that, if you keep the rental car, you could end up paying for it yourself. You also cannot delay getting your car into a body shop while you have the rental car that's being paid for by the other insurance company. Let's take a minute to talk about lost wages. As a general rule, the person who caused the accident is required to pay or repay you for the time off from work. Now this assumes your time off is from the accident. One limitation on this is that the auto insurance company or any insurance company is going to want proof that you had to be off work from the accident and they're probably going to require a doctor's excuse. Without a doctor's excuse, they're probably not going to pay for much of your lost wages. You can't just sit at home taking off work for a year without a doctor's excuse and expect the insurance company to pay the bill. Now some of my clients ask, Attorney Chester, why should I worry about a doctor's excuse? My employer is already paying my lost wages. And what I tell them is, you may actually have to repay your employer the money they've paid out for your lost wages under a short or long-term disability policy. 
The problem with this is even if you were paid by your employer for time off from work, if the auto insurance company doesn't pay you for your lost wages, the money to repay your employer is going to come out of your portion of the settlement. That is why it's best to always have a doctor's excuse for your time off, even if your employer doesn't require one, to help ensure that the auto insurance company pays for all your time off from work. Now a lawyer can also help determine if indeed you have to repay your employer for payments for lost wages. Many of my clients ask me, Attorney Chester, why not just settle the case myself and not worry about my medical bills because I have health insurance? The answer I give them is, you just can't settle your personal injury claim and make your health insurance pay for your future medical bills. Now the reason for this is that health insurance companies have certain rights. And when you settle your personal injury claim, you have to protect the health insurance rights also. Now, you may not be aware of how to do this, but I am. So one of the things that I'll make sure in your claim is that I have permission from your health insurance to settle. What this means is, if there'll be any future treatment, in most cases your health insurance will pay for it. Now there's a nasty little secret the auto insurance companies are not going to tell you. And that is, if you settle your personal injury claim without permission of your health insurance, not only will your health insurance probably not pay for your future medical treatment, they may drop you because you settled without their permission. This alone is a good reason to hire a personal injury lawyer like me, protecting your health insurance benefits. Also, if you don't repay your health insurance, they may sue you. If you are dependent upon Medicare, having a lawyer help settle your claim is especially important. In addition, lawyers can often reduce the amount of money you have to repay health insurers, which benefits you. Remember, it's how much money you keep that matters. Let's take a few minutes to talk about medical malpractice. What is medical malpractice? Simply put, medical malpractice is a subset of personal injury that involves the negligence of medical personnel, such as doctors, hospitals, and the like. Your burden in the medical malpractice context is to prove the doctor was negligent and that the doctor's negligence caused you to be injured. Now, how do you prove the negligence of a doctor? You have the burden to prove that the doctor's care that he gave you is below the standard of care in the community in which you live. This can vary by city or state. The standard of medical care in Manhattan, New York, may be different than that in a rural town. Now, the statute of limitations, or the time you have to file a medical malpractice claim, is rather complicated. To put it simply, you have one year from the time of the medical malpractice. But what if you didn't know about the medical malpractice until later on? Well, in that case, you would have one year from the time you knew or a reasonable person would have known that there was medical malpractice. Now, there are some more limitations on that, so it's important to contact a personal injury lawyer immediately when you think you or a loved one might be the victim of medical malpractice. And one other thing, in Ohio, it's not so easy to win a medical malpractice claim. There are limitations on the damages in medical malpractice, and even before you can file a lawsuit, you need the affidavit of another doctor saying that there was most likely medical malpractice. Let's spend a few moments to talk about wrongful death. What is wrongful death? Wrongful death, quite simply, is a cause of action for the death of someone caused by somebody else. The wrongful death could be caused by someone's negligence, such as a car accident. The wrongful death claim can also arise from the recklessness of another person, such as with drunk drivers, or the death can be caused by the medical malpractice of a doctor. It could also arise from intentional action like assault, battery, murder, or rape. Now there's different types of claims. The wrongful death claim actually belongs to the family members of the person who died. The survivor claim belongs to the person who died if they suffered before their death. It's an odd naming of causes of action, I know, but it's true. The wrongful death claim belongs to those who did not die, and the survivor claim belongs to the one who eventually died. The wrongful death claim damages can be very complicated. Clients will sometimes ask me, what am I entitled to receive if a family member has died from the result of someone else's actions? Well, there's kind of a laundry list. The family members are entitled to the medical bills that were accrued before the person died, as well as the cost of the funeral and the current and future losses of that person. If they were a doctor, or making a large amount of money, that can really add up and help the family financially. Also, the family can collect any kind of benefits that the family would have received if the person had not died, any inheritance that the family would have received had the person not died, any pain and suffering that the family has suffered as a result of their loved one's death, and also what's called loss of companionship, compensation for loss of a family member. How long do you have to file a lawsuit for a wrongful death? In Ohio, two years. <laughs> 